Hello and welcome to Sporadically Interrupted by Meowing, the only show on the web that is... No, it's not even true, is it? <laughs> anyway, just as I was going to press record, the cat was going just absolutely off. So so if you, if you hear that, it's, it's the cat announcing that it's time to go off. Um, I, uh, I'm here to talk more about the, the songs and the record that, uh, that comes out at the end of this week that I'm excited about. And... Uh, and to do that, I have to dig through notebooks. I don't. I, I'm not organized uh, in my uh, stuff at all. I mean, uh, all this, all this stuff will be atop a, 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 a junk heap someday. Um, uh, and I don't, especially once it goes from the writing stage to the studio, then I chart out new things, or somebody else does it for me, and and the the original thing is just goes on a shelf and it sits on the shelf, generally forever. But but I dug up Let Me Bathe in Demonic Light from, this is notebook by the way, is one that's been around for a long time. It's a, it was made from an old copy of a Dylan record, um, a very famous Dylan record that involves the band and I'm not sure what the name of the record is, but, uh, but I can see uh, that's this uh, Rick Danko, I think, and there's Robertson and uh, Garth Hudson, I think, and um, that of course is Bob Dylan and, oh, and it's the other member of the band, got one of those hats. Anyway, um, uh, but I got this, uh, this notebook is, is pretty old um, in that it has like, it's a list of, of fights to get. It says Hagler, Minter, Moore, Gabby, Canizales, and Hagler, Duran. Well, I haven't been buying fights on DVD in a very long time. It's a long time, but people used to sell bootlegs of those. So uh, so yeah, so the notebook's been around for a, for a long time. Notebooks kind of come and go with me. Like, like I'll be in one and then I'll misplace it or it's, get excited about another one and uh, and then it'll sit dormant for a while. And then this one I used for a lot of set lists. Um, here's, a, here's the actual set list from the last time we played Bloomington. And then here's the funny set list I wrote for the band that actually involved, you know, uh, old punk songs. Uh, Wild in the Streets, My War, We Were on Heroin, uh, 21st Century Digital Boy, Stupid Over Disneyland, Pothead, and The American in Me, which would have been an immortal set for Bloomington, I have to say. But uh, but then some people would have been mad. So instead we opened with Done Bleeding and Younger and God, but anyway, that's what happened. When we were Bloomington at some point, um, I think it was just the last the, the, the last tour, um, but that was a while ago now, right? Um, so anyway, I found Let Me Bathe in Demonic Lights original. Uh, like this is the, this is probably I think pretty visibly from, from during the writing of it, right? However, it will probably not surprise some of you like, that's usually when I'm tracking the demo, the one I still insist on playing from. Even though, like, the first thing under the title, besides, it says right there, R15, uh, so that would be a, a rhythm preset at the piano in my uh, office room. Um, R15 if we choose to go that way, it says, uh, which means I don't know, you know, which means I hadn't yet decided uh, on the rhythmic way the song's gonna work, which actually turns out to be pretty important uh, in the development of this song, which took a long time to write. Um, I don't know if it took two days, uh, that, that, that for me is a long time, but the deal with Let Me Bathe in Demonic Light is it's one of my um, sort of uh, trying, you know, the ones where I challenge myself to write as, as well as I can. I mean, there's no such thing as good writing, you know, writing a song is, this comes to meowing, I was telling you, of, you know, writing CFG four times and finding a good chorus, that's good writing too, but for me, Around the time of, I know exactly when it was, it was Satanic Messiah, right? And around that time, the Satanic Messiah EP, I noticed that if I pushed myself, I know I'm, I'm better at piano, or at least at thinking about piano uh, and understanding how to do stuff with it, than I think I am. I just can't actually play it that, you know, I, I'm not as easy with it when, when the time comes. It's better to have Matt be playing the piano than me or, or somebody else, you know. Uh, but... Uh, but I can write some interesting stuff on it, more more complex stuff than I'm capable of on guitar. Um, and it, the big classic example of that is Fire Editorial, right? Um, a song which did take me a whole week to write because I was having to write it section by section and teach myself how to play it because I was I could think a little faster than I could actually move. I can't remember the didn't. It? <laughs> it was da 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 da. Was that big seven? I don't remember. I was pretty happy with that one. I was very happy with that. To be honest. Um, I'm talking very fast. Sorry, <laughs> our time is limited. Uh, my younger son will be home from camp before too long, so I'm trying to to get this in before the house kind of blows up. Um, so yeah, but I found "Let Me Bathe in Demonic Light" where the first thing on the page is the bridge, right? It says C sharp, C minor, B flat, 
A flat, F sharp, B flat. So it, it, it seems to be rooting around B flat and getting there a couple of different ways. Um, and digging through all these, I mean, if you look at page two of the notations, it's just like, you know, like that, that movie where the guy gets obsessed with pie or whatever, you know, um, uh, you know, or something like that. And it's, what's funny about my brain is I look at this, I go, well, that's unreconstructable. But it's not. I can sort of crawl into there and, and figure out what I was talking about. Um, I don't, I mean, must have, there must have been another draft because the, the lyric starts right here in the middle of the page right there. Um, and then there's the, there's the first chorus, but I almost never write the chorus first. But the other thing was, if you've heard the song, you know that it's, it's driven by an acoustic guitar and a, and a, a shuffling percussion arrangement. But it was originally kind of a Carol King sort of Carol King doing jazz-ish, Tin Pan Alley jazz type stuff. Um, right? And it was, it was like... Down at the end of a bar out street The shell of a house where my friends and me used to meet Someday the old flesh, here comes the Carol King part, will give way to the new Right, that is a, a, a B flat and uh, in the left hand, you then go down to an octave F, which is kind of like an Elton John trick, but that's not the, the Elton John one, I think, is like the fourth over the over the chords, or under the chord, but... I'm pretty proud of this, just formally, because so it... Someday the old, and it's a D minor, right? Flesh will give way to the new. If you're a folk songwriter, usually D minor only, then you wouldn't be going to D major later, but if you're thinking about jazz, then maybe you might, right? Find a functioning mirror inside and push right through. Meow. Yeah. <laughs> and then, there I'll be. Who is coming with me? It's like now impossible for me to hear it without hearing the arrangement that Matt and I settled on when we went to play it in that train station. Um, if you haven't seen that, we did uh, an arrangement for acoustic guitar and voice and uh, bassoon and, and I think another woodwind instrument, I forget. Um, but uh, but yeah, once I handed it over to Matt, I said, well, hey Matt, you're going to probably be the guy playing this. This is, uh, you know, uh, I have cats to wrangle. <laughs> You'd be able to play this because it, it, it sounds much more in your skill set than mine. Are you coming over to say hello to the people? Are you coming over? You should do that. You should come say hi. You know, you don't you don't have to meow at them from off camera. Come here. Yes, I know. Here you are. Come on. Come on. Yes. Let me bathe in demonic light by the mountain goats. A song that makes cats meow. Available Friday at record stores near you. <laughs> Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Yes, it is. Um so uh so yes, I hand it over to Matt, and then Matt, you know, when I write a song on an instrument, it sort of becomes tethered to that instrument for a long time for me. Um, I, I'm kind of a, a rigid thinker in that way. Um, but but we couldn't carry a piano to the um, the train station we were recording, so we played it on guitar, and he played it really well. And it, and it became much more of a, a 30s, you know, an earlier 30s jazz thing than what I had been what I had in my mind was was jazz, but a little looser, a little more expansive. But then it got really nice and nice and locked and uh and yeah and so that that's that's the composition uh of, of this one there's a couple of interesting lyric substitutions like uh, the 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 second verse starts uh where is it uh, chain of command maybe 12 years long not 12 or whatever uh, uh, i went through several numbers but the original line is sunken chain of connections which i kind of like but uh, ghostly connections also, but I think chain of command is kind of, uh, I, f I favor more hermetic phrases these days. Um, was there anything else of much interest in uh, in the draft here? I think that's, I mean, <laughs> to me what's most interesting is this top here, which you think, well, that's got, that, that can't actually be what you did, but but it totally is, right? C minor seven plus two, actual music people. What is that? That 
is not plus two. That's a that's a C minor. I guess plus two. It's more C minor nine. It's like it, I have a lot of fun writing above my skill set. Like to me, that's that's what makes some of the most fun songs on the records are the ones where I, I have to push myself and to get to someplace. Um, so, well, that's that's what I have to say about about let me bathe in demonic light. Uh, uh, <laughs> the early demos of which have my uh, son who's nine now, but was like six when I was writing it, announcing the title, which is pretty uh, a great thing to hear. Okay, I will see you uh, tomorrow. Bye.